Hello, so I am going to quickly introduce a couple new topics that will allow us to be able to solve more conservation problems. So I'm going to introduce the Venna contracta, the coefficient of contraction, and a discharge coefficient. So I'm going to introduce three new concepts right now. So if you look at these drawings that I have, um, the drawing in the top left with the two tanks, so let's go ahead and look at this drawing. So if you look at this uh, this tank on the left, you see that it has rounded edges on the bottom. So what's happening is that we have a tank, it's open, open to the atmosphere, and then there's this opening in the bottom of the tank, and the liquid is draining. So the water level is falling, and it's draining through here. And you can see the, the streamline here in the dark blue. Just follow the streamline, you can see that it's following this uh, rounded corner, and then as it exits the tank, it's running perpendicular to... The, the the bottom surface of the tank. Uh, same on this side. So we have follow the streamline and it's following this uh, curve right here. And then as it exits the tank, it's running perpendicular to the bottom surface. So that's the case where we have uh, nice rounded edges. But if we look over on the right here, we have these sharp edges. So we no longer have the nice rounded edges. And if we follow the streamline in this case, what you see is that uh, you still have the lateral momentum as you're exiting the tank. So you still are, you're, you're kind of compressing, so to speak. Um, so the, you can see it better in this picture right here. So we have the sharp edge, and if you follow the streamline, you can see that you're still uh, contracting, contracting, until you get to this point right here. And once you're at that point, then you run perpendicular. So then the water will flow straight down, straight down, straight down, straight down, perpendicular to the bottom surface of the tank. So uh, in each case, we can look at the continuity expression. So if we look at the continuity expression for this rounded tank, we can say that U1, A1 is equal to U2, A2. And in this case, the, the point two that I'm talking about is right here. So that's point two. And then point one would probably be the surface. Okay, and then so if we look at the sharp edged uh, tank here, we can what we are really interested in is this uh, point three here, because we're interested in the, the velocity of the exit stream. Uh, and we're going to get that from point three. So we go Q is equal to U1, A1, which is equal to U3, A3. So this is definitely a valid expression. Only A3 is pretty hard to measure. And what we would ideally like to be able to do is to define A3 in, in terms of A2 because A2 is really easy to measure. It's, it's a fixed length. We know how big the hole is in the bottom of the tank. We don't necessarily know what size or what cross-sectional area we're dealing with on this vena contorta, vena contracta. Um, so yeah, so we'll, we'll, let's say let A3 equals some arbitrary constant, which I'll call CC times A2. So you can define any number in such a way, right? Um, so this is what the the convention has become. Is and call this this CC is the coefficient of contraction. And scientists have done a bunch of experiments, and they've determined that in the majority of cases, CC is going to approximately equal to 0 0.63. So that explains the coefficient of contraction and gives you an idea of what the Venna contracta is. So let's go ahead and move on and explain what the discharge coefficient is. So let me go ahead and scroll down. Okay. So uh, if we look over on the left here, we have uh, fluid, inc incompressible fluid flowing in on the left, and it's being filtered or uh, funneled through this uh, orifice that's created by these two phalanges. And then we have the vena contracta effect so that it's uh, narrowest right here. And then we have a sudden expansion and with that sudden expansion we have all this uh, loss of energy due to turbulence and forming eddies and due to the frictional effects. And then we reestablish the flow pattern after some set period so we call this point three at point three, that's when we reestablish the, the flow pattern. So say I'm interested in doing a general Bernoulli equation between point one and point two. So if that's the case, 
I can eliminate the potential energy because their point 0.1 and point 0.2 are at the same uh, elevation. I can eliminate work, there's no pumps or turbines, and I can eliminate friction. So uh, just a quick mention that if we were doing a Bernoulli uh, balance between 0.1 and 0.3, we would no longer be able to neglect friction because we're having a lot of friction effects due to this turbulence. But since I'm comparing 0.1 and 2, it's fine to neglect friction. So the next thing that we, we want to do is define one of these velocities in terms of the other velocity using the continuity expression. So if I say that Q is equal to U1 A1, which is equal to U2 A2, and then I define U2, or I solve for U2, and I get U1 A1 is over A2, is what U2 is. So now I want to just go ahead and plug this back into the Bernoulli expression. And what I get is U1 squared on 2 times the quantity of Let's see. A1 on A2 minus 1. And I'm going to add to that uh, P2 minus P1 divided by the fluid density, and that is going to equal 0. So actually looking at this, uh, the A1 should be squared. One second. So A1 should be squared and A2 should be squared. Sorry, I was doing algebra in my head. Okay, uh, and then from there, what we want to do is just solve for U1. So we can solve for U1 over here. And that is going to equal to 2 times P2 minus P1 over rho times the quantity of A1 squared on A2 squared minus 1 and this whole thing square rooted. Okay, uh, so again we run into a little bit of a quandary because the cross-sectional area of point 0.2 is going to be difficult to measure so what we'd like to be able to do is define A2 in terms of A0 here. So we know that A2 is going to equal the coefficient of contraction multiplied by A0. So then I can go ahead and plug that back into here. And I get, let me just write this out again, P2 minus P1. And that's a naught squared on the bottom now. All right, uh, so this is pressure two, this is pressure one. So I told you that we were going to define the discharge coefficient. Um, so just looking at uh, the coefficient of contraction here, we have an arbitrary constant in the denominator here. Uh, so Whenever you have an arbitrary constant, what you can do is you can kind of manipulate the rest of the expression so that whatever you end up with is equal to. And what, am I, what I mean by that is I can, get, I can get rid of that coefficient of contraction from the denominator and I can multiply the entire expression by some other arbitrary constant. So I can say this is equal to some other arbitrary constant. I'm going to call that CD, C sub D. And then I'm going to multiply all of that by 2 times uh, P2 minus P1 divided by the fluid density times A1 squared over A0 squared minus 1. So, so long as this is an arbitrary constant and this is an arbitrary constant, this is a completely legal algebraic move. And this uh, CD is the discharge coefficient. So that's how the discharge coefficient is defined. Um, yeah, so that, that's the, the, the basic concepts here. Um, they're all basically just algebraic ways of manipulating and expressing the effect of the vena contracta. Um, 
and it's just taking advantage of this relationship so that we can define something that's hard to measure in in a way that in by something that we can measure easily which is the the a naught which would be the size of the orifice gap right here so these three new concepts will enable us to do uh, two more uh, I'm gonna do two more conservation problems and I'm gonna do those in the next video so I'll see you then